everyone. Welcome to our West River Business Ignite session. I'm Diana Pereira, training consultant at West River Business and your host for the day. So West River Business Ignite is a series of online workshops and webinars by, of course, West River Business. Now, our aim is to provide virtual training solutions to bridge the competency gaps within organizations in the best way possible. Now, especially to address critical issues within the organizational context through professional development programs. WFB Ignite sessions are designed to be relevant and responsive to the current business trends and business needs around the world. Now, these sessions are led by Westward for Business trainers who are professionals and consultants with years of industry experience. Today, the first session of WFB Ignite series will be conducted by our very own Dr. Ronaldo, and the session is on leadership to a competitive advantage in the next decade. And talking about Dr. Ronaldo, uh, Dr. Jagger is an international management consultant with over two decades of experience. He has experience in several industries, including mining, manufacturing, services, and financial sectors. And he's a veteran leader in implementing, developing, managing lean manufacturing to Six Sigma, to the theory of constraints, just-in-time stock management systems, and various management theories within dynamic work setups. And he's a strategist with a prime focus on enhancing productivity and a reduction in operation costs. To sum it all, he's an educator and a facilitator who is encouraging a participative discussion with a blend of theories and their application in the real world context. So let me hand over the session to Dr. Ronaldo. Dr. Ronaldo. Thank you, Diana. Um, and thank you for that very warm welcome and introduction. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our discussion this morning. Um, we want to have a discussion around leadership and what leadership will entail for the next decade. And how do we, what do we need to do in order for us to be um, equipped, to be independent, to be um, productive, efficient, effective in coming up with our own um, strategies, cultures, in order to achieve a competitive advantage in the next decade. Please, as we go on, I think Diana will assist in managing the, um, the text box. From that point of view, um, we participate as we go along. We talk as we go along. It is not a lecture sitting back. And we have to discuss this. From a leadership point of view for the next decade, there's a lot being said. There's a lot of discussion. Leadership is being talked social media, around the water cooler, around the coffee station. What does it actually mean? What is leadership all about? And how do we get leadership in order to advance and be competitive in the next decade? So what are we going to look about? The first one is how to achieve a competitive advantage in the next decade. We have some companies that said, where are they now? And this is where we need input from your side. We have some leaders identified from the, um, who are currently strategic leaders, who are currently leaders around the world in business and in industry that we look up to and say, how are these people, how are they doing what they're doing? I want then from you to tell me who the five best leaders are, who the five worst leaders are that you see from your side. We'll have a look at what is leadership and leadership styles, leadership put to work. How does it actually work? Let's look at somebody out there, well known to all of us, and how they put leadership through the different periods of time. What are leaders saying about leadership? Let's see, what did Winston, Winston Churchill say about leadership? What did Margaret Thatcher have to say about leadership? Then we look at some critical thinking in leadership. And then, of course, 
bring it home, say, how can Westford for business work with you in terms of driving your organization in your industry? How do we get you to be more efficient, more effective? How do we get you to have a competitive advantage moving forward in the next decade? And that's the important aspect that we'll be looking at. Ryan, let's start off. Where are they now before we get there? How do we achieve a competitive advantage in the next decade? The three-pronged approach is intertwined. And as we go through the session, we will see that, yes, they may be separate focus points, but they're all intertwined and they form an integrated approach that takes organizations into the next decade. So we have leadership. We're talking about that. But the leadership itself, one of those aspects we understand is visionary. It is collaboration. So they then, the leader in the organization, plays a major role in developing the strategy. Through that vision, what is our strategy to achieve this that we want to achieve in the long run? But when all things are said and done, we normally find more things are said than done. Not to fall into this trap and not have just talk about it, but implement this, make this reality. It becomes the way we do things around here in our organization. And the way we do things around here is a very loose definition of a corporate culture. Our culture is one of efficiency. We have a culture of innovation. We have a culture of agility. We have a culture of performance that drives us to achieve the strategy, which is driven again, monitored, developed, carved out by leadership itself. So we can see that these three are intertwined and we work together from that point of view. Some aspects, where are they now? Here we can get input. A lot of you will know these companies. A lot of you may not know these companies. Toys R Us. Toys R Us, one of the biggest international toy stores around the world. Visiting the Toys R Us store in um, New York, in Manhattan, they have, they had, uh, their retail shop there was on Times Square. It was so big, you had a Ferris wheel in the store itself. Everybody used to know Toys R Us. We used to buy there all the time. Then we move over to Kodak. What happened to Kodak? They were around from 1889 up until 2012. What do you believe? And yeah, please use the text box, everybody. What do you believe? Where did Kodak go wrong? Why is Kodak not around today? What is the challenge? What, what happened to Kodak? Everybody had a Kodak. The film you bought, put in your camera in that scenario. What, where, what happened to Kodak? They didn't follow trends. They had no vision. They didn't innovate. Innovation comes through, lack of innovation. Again, we go back to there was no innovation. Innovation is driven through organization culture. Organized culture is driven through leadership. We can see what is happening in this. Pan American Airlines, 1927 to 1991. Huge airline, one of those that's got Polaroid, very closely linked with Kodak. Then everybody used to, we, we looked at General Motors. General Motors was selling cars, the biggest car retailer or seller in the United States. Again, they are missing today. Compact, blockbusters. All of these are huge organizations. We grew up with them. I grew up with them. They were part of the brands around the world. I have a daughter at university now, even talking to her, and I say, let's talk about Kodak, about Polaroid. She looks at me, what, what is the father talking about? Who are these things that he's talking about? And there we go. Modern trends improved of technology and innovation. So we can see that somewhere along the line, Innovation comes to the fore. Innovation, ladies and gentlemen, does not necessarily have to, you need to develop a mind-blowing, world-altering, nation-saving something. Innovation is keeping up with the time, being agile. There's three constants in life. 
death, taxes, and change. We're going to see later Kobe has a different viewpoint. But things are going to change. How are we keeping up with change? That's where leadership comes to the fore. We're driving leadership from that point of view. Right, we move on to the next. Um, who are these leaders? Do we recognize them? Left top, who do we have there? On the left top, do we recognize these leaders? Who are they? Elon Musk, Elon Musk. Very important aspect. We have to recognize qualities and so on of, of leaders. It's not, we do not necessarily have to agree with what they are doing, but these are leaders of industry. Yes, we got the next one there. We have already Bill Gates. Who's the lady in the top right hand side? Who's on the top right hand side? Who's the lady there? Oh, we're getting a bit stuck here, I see. Oprah, everybody knows Jeff. Um, Jeff Bezos, we know. Who's the lady? Top right hand side. Black suit, gray hair. That is the head of the International Monetary Fund. Leader around the world from a financial point of view. Very highly regarded. This is Christine that we have as the leader of. Latmade is the leader of the, um, yeah, Lagarde. Christine, leader of International Monetary Fund. We then see Jeff Bezos. Everybody knows Jeff Bezos. I think most of us have used his organization. Amazon has delivered something at some stage to all of us. Oprah Winfrey, also well-known around the world. Then Branson, there we go. Mohamed, it's Richard Branson. I think if we go into the dictionary for a definition of entrepreneurship, his name will stand right there. So is leadership. Left bottom, who's that gentleman there? Who's the gent left bottom? Martin Luther King. There we go, Jeff Mayadeen. Hello, Mayadeen, one of my students at this stage, busy with our doctorate together there. Then we have Martin Luther King. I have a dream. He had a vision, he was going somewhere. The lady in red, who's the lady in red? Center bottom, Lena Nair, that's correct. The CEO of? Chanel. Chanel, almost there. It was at least you were in one of the brands in there. Right bottom, who is that? Who's the lady at the bottom? Indira Noy, former CEO and chairperson of Pepsi. These are, we all recognize them. We can see how quickly it comes to the fore. These are industry leaders known around the world. They are from all over the world, from the United States, Pakistan, all over England. And we have leaders in the world and we recognize them. I want you now to tell me your opinion, everybody, to who are the five best strategic leaders in business today. Who are the five best strategic leaders in business today? Your opinion. Who comes to mind? Keshe Ambani. Ibrahim. This last lady managed to make PepsiCo the most ethical company for eight years in a row. Remarkable. That's why we have her on the screen there. Right, who are the five best leaders? Adani, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Some more input. Who are these? Jeff Bezos. Leader says Jeff Bezos. And we agree there, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. Are there more? Bill Gates. I think he's retiring now, but yes. Jack Mahoon, Yun. Cheryl Steinberg, Warren Buffett. Grumpy gentleman that. You don't want to get on his wrong side. But when Warren Buffett speaks, that's right, everybody listens. Again, my dean thinks Jeff Bezos. 
I went and I asked the same question. I cheated. Look, I don't want to get you into a bait and say, I don't agree with you. So I cheated. I went and I went to Chat GPT and I asked Chat GPT, who are the best, the five best strategic leaders, according to Chat GPT? And I asked, why? Number one came Elon Musk. And the commentary around that on Chat GPT was visionary leadership and the ability to disrupt multiple industries simultaneously. Visionary leadership makes sense. The next one was Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Again, I highlighted the area there, strategic thinking, the ability to think strategically, and then a focus on customer centricity has been the central to Amazon's growth. It's not customer service. It's not customer satisfaction. It's customer centricity. In other words, we design our processes, systems, and people are integrated and are working with the customer at center. The next one came out was Tim Cook. Nobody mentioned Tim Cook. Again, there is a CEO of Apple. Strategic leadership comes to the fore and is emphasized on product innovation. New product all the time, getting launched. Number four, Mary Burra from General Motors. Again, we look at the, it's focused on product quality, innovation. This is coming to the fore all the time. And the last one, according to Chad GPT, is Satya Nadella from Microsoft. Transform the company's culture. Ladies and gentlemen, looking at leadership, I think when we ask Chad GPT, who brings it from El Ever, artificial intelligence, pulls it together from everywhere on the internet and what people and so on say. It's becoming clear we have central themes here in order to be successful. We're talking visionary, strategic thinking, focus, collaboration, culture of the organization. We right back at our integrated approach earlier. Here's an interesting one, though. We have to balance it out. You know, from an academic point of view, we we'll say we have to get both sides of the story before we can get to a conclusion. So what is on the converse to that? What is on the other side? Who are the five worst strategic leaders in business today? Who are the five worst business leaders or strategic leaders in business today? Gautam Madani. Oh, Muhammad is critical on his thesis. I'm not a strategic leader. Interesting question. Kishore, that's normally that that's a response somebody asks when we don't know the answer. That is a very interesting or a very, very good question you're asking there. It gives us time to think about it. Muhammad says the ex Nokia CEO. Right. I'm sure there'll be many of them, but most of them are unknown. Gosh. We, we tend to think of all the successful one always. We tend to think of who's made it. We get there, there we got Musk, Bezos, Oprah Winfrey, um, Nair. The, we think of these, but do the five worst leaders? Do we have some more we can think of? It's a difficult one. We don't get asked this question. We always look on, on the other side. We don't balance it out. What is the balance? Abraham Hitler, very good. You know, we talk a lot about leadership and what, what leaders they were. And when you put the name Hitler, people stand back. And we and very, Abraham, we, a lot of time we find people say, but he was not a leader. Of course, the man was a leader. Do we agree with what he did? We don't agree with the action and what they did, but we have to recognize. That's a very historical one. I want to look at today. Look at Adish. Elon Musk. Elon Musk is one of the worst strategic leaders today. You can see the interesting thing around this. And this is how and why we need to look at themes. We need to look at what comes to the fore as trends or themes in this leadership story, because we can very clearly see that. Artis, thank you very much for that. It says Elon Musk. Now, 
My world is not Diana's world. Diana's world is not Raya's world. Ibrahim's world is not Fatima's world. And that we, we see the world differently. We look at the world through different lenses. So now, we see good leaders, bad leaders, and our perception, interpretation is completely different. Yeah, I will put that not as bold, though. Biden is a very bad leader. There'll be 60 million Americans that may disagree with you. But because my world's not your world, I see it differently. And Al Medina says, I think, I think Biden is, is not a good leader. He did a speech two days ago, and he ended his speech by saying, God save the queen. People were looking at this as, what is he talking about? I was waiting for Putin. Putin, again, do we agree with him? Do we not agree with him? Donald Trump, interesting ones. Again, I went from the business sector. I normally try to stay away from the political side because we open up a new can of worms when we get in that regard. But I cheated again, ladies and gentlemen. And I went to ChatGPT and I say, who are the five words? Look at that. Elizabeth Holmes, Theranos, founder, former CEO of Theranos, faced legal issues and allegations of fraud. Ethical leadership. So we can see that come out, something in that regard. Adam Newman, we were the co-founder, former CEO of Newark. Again, we have the questionable business practices. Ethical leadership, working with the people. It's not about me. It's not the I. It's not, it's the people. I'm working for the team. And there we get, we can see Adam Newman. Travis Kalinick from Uber, co founder, former CEO of Uber. Controversies related to companies' workplace culture, regulatory or regulatory challenges, aggressive business tactics. We can see now, when, when we looked at the, the, the characteristics, the traits that was brought out by our best leaders, it was clear we're talking about ethical business. We're talking about visionary business. Here we got, a, a builds a culture of performance, a culture of innovation. We don't see that here. We don't see innovation. We don't see visionary. We don't see strategic thinking. We see an ethical business conduct. We see poor uh, workplace culture. John Stumpf, Wells Fargo, damaged the bank's reputation. What did he do? <clears throat> um, faced major scandal involving creation of unauthorized customer accounts to meet sales targets. Martin Winterkin, the Volkswagen, VW, former CEO of VW. What did he do? Manipulated emission tests on their vehicles. Severe financial reputation consequences. Volkswagen leading to his termination of his contract. That is gentlemen, is not about these individuals. It's about characteristics. It's about traits. It's about what do we need as a leader to drive the vision of the organization. Those innovative things, collaboration aspect, that's the kind of aspects we're looking for. Ethical leadership. And that's what we always look to history to learn from history. Ascertain where are we currently, based on what we learn from history. Apply that going forward. And that's how we prepare our organizations to be um, getting competitive advantage moving forward. Talk a lot about leadership. Just quickly, what is leadership? It's the ability to influence individuals or groups to achieve goals. I think the important aspect we need to look at here is ability to influence. It's not coerced. It's not power. It's not forced, which we see. Doctor, do you think this is a fair list? As yes, they had some bad discussions, but they also had a God of Blue stories. Muhammad, let's look at that. The man or the, the lady or the leader itself, and that's a good question you have there. It's a matter of person is not a bad leader from all. 
because at the end of the day, I became CEO of VW, for instance, we take that as an example. So somewhere along the line, we've got to look at them and say they were good qualities. What are we going to do to prevent slipping down, if we wanted to put it that way, as, as Muhammad is asking us there? We also can look at somebody like Hitler. When you really go back and start it off where Hitler started, the ideology, what he had for the people in Germany, was that bad? What happened down the line for him to slip in that regard? I think we go back and we look at the leadership, corporate culture, and, and, and the strategy itself. And again, those one, just like the charge of the light brigade. Absolutely, Jeff, that's it. I want us to look at this, those influence individuals, not force them. And I think that's where it comes in. One of the aspects, and we we'll look at that, we have transformational leadership, and everybody loves transformational leadership. When we delve into transformational leadership, though, well, Mohammed and Jeff, for instance, there we find that transformation, transformational leadership, we very closely link to charismatic leadership. Then it becomes about the charisma. It becomes about me. It becomes about working on people's emotions. Now, I think we can see I'm on the slippery slope here. I'm moving from charismatic leadership. It's very close slipping down to autocratic leadership, going to dictatorship. And that is why we need to always look at constantly the three constants in life. The first one, very important, change. When change happens, how do we also, the leader gets checks himself. How do we keep our leadership in check? How do we make sure that this corporate culture is the driving force to achieve the corporate strategy that drives our leadership? Uh, and I think that makes sense. We also find the leader provide guidance, inspiration, motivation to achieve the goals, create the vision, rally people around common cause. They have the skills and knowledge to make informed decisions and problem solve. Critical thinking skills. That's how do we develop that critical thinking skills. And that's an ongoing basis. It's not something we do here and there. It's a set of behaviors. If it's behavior, I can be taught behaviors. I can alter behaviors. I can transfer behaviors. So to help people align their collective direction to execute the strategic plans. So it's not about me. And that's why when we look at this, down the line, it becomes those one that we spoke about, Muhammad, which was, again, coming back to you. It was referring back to, it started becoming about me. That's where I think we start, we start falling down. We look at the McKinsey study that was done, nearly 200,000 people, 81 organizations, all around the world, it's four types of behavior. 89% of leadership effectiveness, they found one, being supportive. Again, we get that thing. It's collaboration. Would you agree with that? It's not about me. It's about supporting. It's about driving. It's operating with strong, strong results orientation. We are driving towards achievement. We are seeking different perspectives, differentiating factors, competitive advantage, and solving problems effectively critical thinking, critical thinking skills. Again, Diana mentioned at, at the opening today, Western for Business, what are we trying to do? We are working with leaders today, up and coming leaders. It's the focus that we have to say, how do we drive, drive critical thinking skills? How do we drive this constant thinking, critically analysis, critically thinking to drive and, and find, solve problems? Active listening skills, absolutely. We've got to listen. I think it's the end of the day, a very good one. Um, on a program I was watching the other day, uh, um, and the interesting aspect is we got one mouth and two ears. Is that coincidence? Or does that not even through the design of the human, had one mouth to talk, but two ears to listen? And that's where the leadership comes in. You're about empathy, but act out of empathy. Again, it's about not me. It's about us. It's about them. It's about the people I'm driving. 
Another question, ladies and gentlemen, which leadership style is best to gain a competitive advantage? Which is the best to gain competitive advantage? I think we can have examples here all over this different kind of leadership styles, autocratic leadership styles. I think immediately we're going to go to the likes of Hitler, Putin. It's my way or the highway. Democratic leadership style all around the world we find Martin Luther King, Barack Obama. Locally in South Africa we had Nelson Mandela. Delegative, visionary. I may say Elon Musk is a visionary leadership. He can see where we go. He can see where he's driving it. So others may not see it that way. Affiliative leadership. Then we have pace setter. Who are the pace setters? Transactional leadership. We measure it. What's the plan? What's the actual? What's the variance? What do I need to do? What do I need you to do to deliver X, Y, and Z? Reward of G, I will give you. Transformational leader. Transfer knowledge. Transfer skills. Drive it to the people. Make it important to the people. It's more about them. Coaching leadership style. How do we get people to on the level? The, the, the major deliverable of a leader, apart from visionary, taking the organization, getting inspire, inspiration in them, is to develop other leaders. Bureaucratic leaders. Government entities. State-owned enterprises. Bureaucratics. Cross the T, dot the I. So from your point of view, I want to be have a competitive advantage. I want to move in the next decade. I want to be competitive. Which leadership style would you say is the best leadership style to achieve this? Jeff says, depend various permutations and computations. Different markets will have different plans of actions. Sure. I think it depends on the situation. The leader should have a repertoire of various styles and behaviors of Democracy, visionary, transactional, coaching, transformation. I'm getting visionary, democratic. The best leadership style is coaching leadership style. All right, we're getting opinions, a visionary, that visionary. Did we, Mohammed says, agrees with Fatima. Fatima says, visionary. We get others says, visionary. The most important for us to have a competitive advantage is visionary. Right. Visionary and coaching should be mixed. Empowering. I'm an empowering style. So we got, we're moving, empowering. Charlotte moves towards the transformational leadership style. Where does Stephen come from now with situational, different styles for different situations? What does that mean? What is situational? Stephen, I don't see situation. I'm looking, you know, I, I've got the glasses on. I'm looking around. I'm, I'm not seeing. What, what is this situational thing you're talking about? It's not here, Stephen. Nariman says democratic in general, but we have to juggle, juggle the use based on yeah, situation again. What is the situation? I'm now thrown off completely. I'm, I'm asking about these, these leadership styles I'm in front of. People come now with something that's not here. What is, what is this situation? Ah, there we go. I'm back at transformation of strategic and, See, I can relate to that. What is this, this this situation? Let's have a look at this in practice. Let's have a look at this in practice. I'm thinking. Encouraging everyone to pose your questions, says Raya. Okay, if I move to the next one. Leadership styles put to work. Here's somebody we all know, Steve Jobs, 1955 to 2011. The interesting aspect around this kind of aspect is we can look at, and now I'm getting to the situational leadership. Fantastic. Situational leadership style itself is not a leadership style. However, the situational leadership style says we will take at any given time in the situation, use one of these, which is a different leadership style, depending on what we require in that situation. Stephen, thank you very much. For that. So what we have, Stephen Jobs started off him and Steve Wozniak founded Apple 1976, 1984 present 128K Macintosh computer. Things were going well and they're driving this. And now the interesting thing is we need to look at the leader and we can link the leader to a business. Here's the important aspect. So we can look at the leadership style and actually trend or measure the company performance 
linked to that. So we have Apple coming to the fore and is doing fantastically well. Things are going up and all of a sudden things are stagnating. Um, and, and business is going down. We then find here in 1985, we see that, that he leaves Apple due to problems with other executives, autocratic leadership style. It was Steve Jobs' way or the highway. People come and say, we can't work with this man. We can't run, we, we are here. And sitting in a company like that, wasn't it? Said, we have to make very difficult decisions. They came together and Steve Jobs was fired. Steve Jobs fired in Apple. He went out and worked with Pixar then. He went and he found animation studios, Pixar. The Toy Story, all of us know Toy Story. One, two, three, comes from Pixar. What is this man? Again, we can see here the situation has changed. We have a visionary leadership style. We can see where this is going, where we bring in technology, Hollywood together, and now we're driving something completely different. In the meantime, Apple is doing well. Up until a point here in 1997, they say, hang on, business is going down again. We, we need something else. We need new products. We need, what are we going to do? We're going to find a visionary leadership, but we're going to give them coaching. Coaching leadership style. So it's not about the leader accepts that I need to change. As he changes, he comes back in 2001 or 1997, returns to Apple as chief executive, board appoints him again, says to him, but you need to change. You need to have a coaching leadership style. But this passion that you have with a visionary, we need you to launch our products. That's why we always see the new product. Steve Jobs was there. He had the product in hand, said, this is the new one. This is the new iPhone. This is the new this. This is the new revolution. We are bringing charismatic leadership to the fore. Is bringing that passion, that charisma, charismatic leadership, inspiring people to drive, to develop, to be innovative. What happens to the Apple company? The business picks up again. And so we can see in different situations, Steve Jobs uses different leadership styles in different situations. And the company's performance is directly related to that. The change of the constants we spoke about, change. You change with the times. And the situation changed, the leadership style changed. Another interesting one that you can go read on, ladies and gentlemen, um, is, 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 is um, Sam Walton from, from um, Walton's uh, in, in the United States, not Walton's from um, the, the major retailer in the United States. Again, he changed over a period of time. And every time when he changed the situation, the first one to bring barcoding into retail, the first one that says, it's not about the customer. My focus is looking at my people. If I look after my people, Walmart, thank you very much for that, uh, Matthew and Mohammed. He says, if I look after my people, they will look after the customer. Different mindset. And again, as the situation changed, technology outside the, the macro business environment changed, the market business environment changed, the leader changed, the performance of the company changed as the leader changed. Very important to have a look at it from that point of view. So we need to change. We need to be adaptable. What do other people say about leadership? Don't follow the crowd. Let the crowd follow you, Margaret Thatcher, the Iron Maiden. Winston Churchill, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. Not always going to be fantastic. Not everything we touch we make is going to yield results. Learn from it. Understand the situation. Reanalyze the situation and move forward. As we look ahead to the next decade, leaders will be those who empower others. Somebody spoke earlier about empowerment. It's not about me, says Bill Gates. It's about empowering others. These Bill Gates, Winston Churchill, Margaret Thatcher, leaders in our times, Ronald Reagan says the greatest leader is not necessarily the one who goes or who does the greatest things. He's the one that gets the people to do the greatest things. Again, we can see our things or these things are coming through. It's about inspiration. It's about getting our people to do it. 
Steve Jobs just spoke about it. Management is about persuading people to do things they do not want to do. While leadership is about inspiring people to do things they never thought they could. Transformation, charismatic, a leadership style in a situation that instills confidence with our people. Let's go forward and look at some of these critical thinking skills for strategic leadership. What do we want? We look at here, Stephen Covey, obviously three constants, change, choice, and principle. Change, choice, and principle. Principles came from our themes. The best leaders, or rather, when we looked at the five worst leaders, I'm thinking the principles were questionable at best in terms of the business conduct. And making the right choices, and combating change. So what do we want from our leaders? Is the agility and adaptability. And things change, we need to change. So we got problem solving skills. It resolves specific issues as they're out. So the first one you need to have is critical thinking, the analysis part. Cognitive, ability to analyze, problem solve, and change. Agile, adaptable, not red tape not quick decisions, learn to embrace change, keep an open mind, leave your ego at the door. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not about me, it's not the I, it's about the organization, it's about the people. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Build impact roles that drive success, Charlotte says. It's about the people. So we need to have a agility and adaptability. Very important is the first one. What is the next one? Emotional intelligence. Self-awareness. Self-awareness is about recognizing, understanding your emotions, what you're feeling. Why are you feeling this way? As well as appreciating how they affect those around you. We are not an island. Man is not an island. We have impact on people around. So we want to be self-regulation. Don't need to be managed. We're leaders. So there's this motivation. We drive ambition. We want to achieve. Again, from our very knowledgeable participants here today, empathy. Empathy is more of understanding. Is we know, we, we really feel with that person. And then, of course, social skills. Social skills, self awareness self regulatory empathy, motivation. We drive these things. We have emotional and intelligence, all right? So we drive roles at both success and we want to have emotional intelligence. So we've got agility, agile, change. Why? Because we have motivation, we have empathy, we have social skills. We're driving change with the time. We have the emotional intelligence. Visionary thinking. The Nobel laureate, Dennis Gabor said, we cannot, the future cannot be predicted. However, the future can be invented. The future cannot be predicted, but futures can be invented. So if we have visionary thinking, where do we see ourselves going forward? What is the journey, the path? How are we going to get there? We are creating, inventing the future of the organization. To have visionary thinking, we need to have emotional intelligence. We are back at the previous characteristic. So these are intertwined. We have creativity, critical thinking skills, agility, communication skills, clearly communicate, articulate, talking to our peers, subordinates, and team members. Things are not always going to go well. We've now established it. We even saw the great Steve Jobs got fired. Jeff Bezos, the same thing. He wasn't fired, but he was getting very close. His people again came to Jeff Bezos and said, we can't work with you. We cannot work with this autocratic approach in life. He got coaching. He got coaching assisted him in order to move away from that. So there's resilience in terms of we're going to get hit by from left field, unexpected things, boldness, stand up, lead the people, be in front of them, risk taking. Strategic risk taking, not stupid risk taking, strategically risk taking, collaboration. It's not about me. It's we are working together and together we create this culture 
the mindset, how do we do things around here? It's about collaboration. It's about visionary. We're trying to achieve our vision. It's about emotional intelligence. We have empathy with one another. That's why we collaborate and we are agile. When the changes in the macro business environment changes, we change going forward. It's always in that regard. Digital fluency. What is this digital fluency? We're looking at these two aspects, digital capabilities and digital principles. The macro business environment, we look at PESTEL, political, economical, social technology legislation. One of the major changes today, we even saw IT did using chat GPT earlier to look at the best and the worst leaders. Artificial intelligence technology, the development of technology says that the future lies in technology. How we use, utilize technology. There comes the digital fluency. The capability is being digitally adept and innovative, able to confidently choose to use digital tools to learn, create, and share. The important aspect there is not a threat to the organization. It's these things are changing. Use them, learn from that, share them, and work with them. Demonstrating values when working digitally, being an ethical, respectful, responsible digital system. Technology has been used for all kinds of criminal activities, fraudulent activities, but they're also there to work for us and work better. So we need to be digital fluent in terms of using technology, driving our organization. Why do we exist? What do we aim to achieve? How are we planning to achieve our vision? What do we stand for and how do we behave? And how are we going to differentiate ourselves from our competitive? Those are vision, mission, values, positioning comes from purposeful driven leadership. Be clear about the purpose. You go to organizations, what is your vision? What is your mission? A lot of most employees will say, well, it's something hanging on the wall. Somewhere there on the wall by human resource department. It means we've not accepted it. Leadership has not instilled that with us. We're not working together. If I don't know what the purpose is, what's our vision? What's our mission? What do we want to achieve? How are we going to get there? I cannot be clear about my role. When I come to work every day, this that I'm doing, how do I know it's contributing to what we want to achieve or am I just here? So we can see that purposeful driven gives us the clear purpose. Therefore, it becomes clear about your role. It becomes clear about who you serve. Who is the customer? We got customer centricity. The theme out there, we're building around this customer. We want to be ethical. So we're driven by our values, ethical business values. And then, of course, we are authentic. We do it our way because that's how we differentiate ourselves from the marketplace. Collaboration. Motivate and positively, delegate responsibility, communicate clearly. We take risks, solve problems, transparent. The themes are coming through the same. We need to have trust, inspiration, teamwork, share success, support, assist, exchange ideas, exchange solutions, critically analyzing together. So we can see, ladies and gentlemen, all these things are coming to the fore and they are intertwined. We have separate slides here. We have separate labels, but we can see they actually form one. Einstein family said, intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. Intellectual growth should commence at birth and cease only at death. So we are looking because there's constant change out there. We have continuous learning. Know your interests. So you can learn a new skill, learn a new skill. Acknowledge your learning style. What is the best way? Set goals for you, for the development, for the people, for the organization. Seek resources. Join a group, like-minded learners. Get involved. Share your skills and knowledge. This is what my world is not yours. We see things differently. We have different values. We have different skills and knowledge. But if we communicate with one another using this platform, working as coaches and working together, we co-create knowledge. Co-creation of knowledge is how we then move forward. Continuous learning. And then things are not always going to go well. But be resilient. Flexible. 
We're back at agility. A leader needs to be able to bounce back quickly and protect the team. Things are not always going to work. Everything runs well the moment we think we've got this sorted. Life happens and will just bring us back down. We have pandemics. We have wars. We have changes in the macro business environment. React to that. Be agile. Be realistic, but be optimistic. Drive the vision. Review, is our vision still re uh, relevant? And we drive that. It comes with emotional intelligence. We're back at that. Locus of control. Who controls your destiny? Your destiny lies in your own hands. That organization, it's about what you're going to do. Problem solving and team exercises. Emotional intelligence. Emotional development that takes place. Flexibility. It's like we're summarizing resilience comes from this that we've already spoken. And I think it's clear these kind of aspects that we need and drive in order to achieve what we need to achieve going forward. So bringing this together, the themes that we get through, we've spoken about the characteristics, but now we've got the corporate strategy and the building blocks to the corporate strategy, vision, strategies, goals, and initiative. I think we've seen that before. We've seen that come out in these critical thinking skills, in these critical analysis aspects. That's what we are driving. That gives us an organization culture, how we do things around you. Look at some of those building blocks. Innovation, outcomes orientation, people orientated, team orientated, detail orientated, differentiating through aggressive from the market. These are the characteristics as leaders that we need to instill in order to get that corporate strategy in place so that we differentiate ourselves and be competitive in the marketplace and create that culture where we can see of inclusivity. We work as a team, we drive as a team and we build things going forward. We've gone full circle. That competitive advantage in the next decade we can see is driven by leadership, is driven behind the corporate strategy that comes from leadership in collaboration with the people. Make them part of the process. In other words, we have a corporate culture of collaboration. People support what they help to create. People want to be part of the process. People want to share in the success. So we can again see the leadership, the corporate strategy, drives the corporate culture, one of agility, one of resilience, one of adaptability one of emotional intelligence. And that's how we are driving and we're achieving what we need to achieve. How do we do this at Westwood Business? We assist and we work with you, with Charlotte, with Mohammed, with Matthew. We want to enhance this critical thinking skills and develop this. We do this through skills development and coaching. Critical thinking, strategic planning, skills development. Takes the manager and the leader from tox execution problem identification, risk analysis. It's very really simple. One of the frameworks we use is something called fuel, and it's reiterative. We frame the conversation. What is this that we want to achieve? We have the frameworks here. We have successful leaders. We have leaders that were less successful. We've got learnings from Sam Walton. We've got learnings from Steve Jobs. We have learnings out to say, let's frame the conversation. What is the as is? Understand the current state. This is where we are at currently. In the next decade, where do we want to move? Short term, medium term, up to then. So we explore the desired state and then lay out success plans. The vision, the mission, the actions, the activity. We measure those. If we can't measure it, we can't manage it. That way, ladies and gentlemen, all of a sudden, these become tangible. We build in the agility aspect. We build in adaptability. We build in the resilience aspect. And as things change, as Stephen Covey says, we change, we adapt. Is the vision, the objective still valid? Do we need to adapt that? We don't want to go back and be a Pan-American Airlines. We do not want to be a Kodak. We do not want to be a Toys R Us. So this iteration, it becomes a habit. And when it becomes a habit, and we start doing this, and we drive and coach and work to achieve this. We transfer the skills to our people. We transfer the knowledge to our people, and we create a culture of innovation, a culture of resilience, 
a culture of performance. And I hope that makes sense to you. That's the end of the day. West for Business can work with you in terms of driving that. It's again, it's collaborative, not only internally, ladies and gentlemen, but let's be collaborative between institutions. You have a business, you have flourished out there as a business. We, from the Western point of view, from an academic point of view, from a consulting vision that we have and experience, we can work with you in that collaboration, taking hands, partnering, academic institutions, business, and let's drive this forward, let's achieve that and move forward in terms of what we want to do. Your thoughts in this regard. I was given an hour. I think we've gone just under an hour. Diana will be very happy with me in that regard. Um, Diana, if there are any questions, uh, thank you for the time, ladies and gentlemen. Your input in this, very valuable. So I appreciate that. Um, I'm handing it back to you, Diana. Yeah, hi, Dr. Renato. Thank you so much uh, for your amazing uh, session. We are already getting many comments. And also we have two questions, one from Dr. Divakar. He's asking, how to take decisions or behave during emotional scenarios? My dear and good friend, Dr. Divakar, um, one of the examiners we have in the doctorate faculty, and I asked not to for him to be an examiner with my my students because it's very tough on, on, on some of these students. And then he comes and asks me a question like that. How do we take decisions? I think the first one is, if we go back, if I may, Dr. Devarka, I want to go back to our framework. Understand the current state. And I think we always need to go back to say, where are we now? Where would we like to be? Explore the desired state. Of course, then we need to identify what are the barriers to get to that state. What is the obstacles that we need to overcome in order to get that state? And then lay out tangible plans in order to achieve that. Again, tangible. If we can't measure it, we do not cannot measure progress. And we will never know if we achieve what we set out to achieve. So in this regard, it's about the as is, the to be. Understanding the resilience part because we're not just plain sailing to get there and keep on working at it until we achieve that. I hope, Dr. Devalka, that answers your question. Diana? Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ronaldo. I, I believe uh, Dr. Devalka got it. And he is saying, fuel is the key. Thank you, Dr. Ronaldo. And we do have another question uh, from Antran. Um, the question is, do you think an effective leadership style or styles depends also in which national culture or country he or she is operating? For example, a leader in the US versus a leader in China. Thank you very much for that question. And, and, and it's a very valid and a good one. I think the most important aspect around that, again, it's understanding the current state. We go back in that regard, it's very simply it says, my world is not your world. So we have to have an understanding, especially dealing on the global side, in terms of what am I going to do and how are they different from the way we do things around here? So the very important aspect, cultural and the background in that regard plays a very, very major role in terms of a difference between strategy now is tactics. So I will then deploy different tactics and a different leadership style in different cultures. When I'm dealing in the United States of America, it's more of a, it's more of a forceful leadership style. It's taking leadership, it's taking the bulls by the horn and we run with that. So we're moving towards charismatic, transformational charismatic, a combination of that. When we deal in the East, if we go to Taiwan, Singapore, these kind of areas. There it is about the collective. The culture there is about society. It's about everybody. It's inclusivity. I cannot come with a charismatic, overbearing leadership style into that area. I will fail dismal as a leader. So based on that understanding collaborative, 
and understanding about the collectivism that we find in that area. It's about having a collective, collaborative leadership style. It's about developing society. It's about bringing all these aspects to the fore, and then your leadership style, yes, must be adapted in terms of the change as it goes along. Thank you, Dr. Ronaldo. And we have many questions coming in. Another question we have is from Sri Shanti. Um, she's asking, when on a time crunch and strategic decision needs to be made and you are not able to make one, how to manage the scenario? Make the decision. <laughs> it's very simple. What we find in this regard, it's better to make a decision and move forward than make no decision at all. The first option we have is there's, there's the crunch is there because we need to change. We need to adapt. We need to do something. By not taking the decision means I'm carrying on the way it is now. Einstein put it very clearly. He says the definition of insanity is if we keep on doing the same things and expect a different result, it's not going to happen. So the important aspect now is the information you do have at hand currently, make that decision, but review that and keep on working at that. But it's better to make a decision always than not take a decision at all. And that, again, was one of the lessons we learned from, um, from Steve Jobs. Thank you, Dr. Ronaldo. And one more question. Uh, this is from Said. Uh, he's asking how leaders play an important role in business. I think we, we saw that in Steve Jobs. When we look at the way that Steve Jobs led that organization, the, 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 the performance of the organization is directly linked to his involvement and leadership style that he applied. We have the same Sam, Sam Walton in terms of Walmart, the, the, the exact same can be measured there. And these are examples all around the world that really at the end of the day, it's very important for the leader to drive, that will drive the success of the organization. The leader develops, as we saw, the strategy. The strategy, if it's implemented correctly internally in the organization, will drive the culture. We then get a culture of performance, a culture of innovation, a culture of resilience. And that's how the, the, the organization performs. So crucial, crucial for organization performance is leadership. Uh, Dr. Ronaldo, we do have a few questions in the chat box as well. Uh, Kishore is asking, who is better leader, a inborn leader or practiced leader? It's the age-old question. It's the debate. Are leaders born or are leaders made? We have theories around that. We've got trait theory that says leaders are born with certain characteristics. If you have those, you'll be a leader. Some of those are even um, physical traits, height, size, weight. If you're big, you're a leader. Others are saying it's about the behavior. We can train behavior. I think we do this discussion a lot out there. And it's, it's a combination at the end of the day. One very important aspect about a leader, though, is there are skills and there are behaviors which can be taught, can be transferred. So leaders can be made, but there's one very important thing we need to understand. We can take the horse to water, can't make him drink. Therefore, it's important that leader must want to be a leader. The leader must have the desire to lead. And I think that may be, a portion of that is born. That may be, from our opinion, instilled in the individual. So I would say at the end of the day, we're looking at a combination, born, made, and therefore we got a leader, but he must want to be a leader. Yes, Ibrahim, it's always been debate, born or made, we don't. It will be debated long after us as well. Diana? Yeah, uh, Dr. Ronaldo, the last two questions of the day. Uh, yeah. Sophie, Sofian is asking, who is the best business leader in your opinion and why? It's a bit of a personal question, I would say. That is a very tough one. Um, my personal favorite at the end of the day that I always look up or, or look at is, is, is um, Richard Branson. 
I think Richard Branson is very aspiring, he's diverse, um, and it's about people. Richard Branson said, for instance, he will always hire very lazy people. Now that I can relate to very well. He says he will hire lazy people because they will find the shortest, quickest way to do the job properly. So we can again look at that innovation side. When we look at in order to achieve in the next decade is innovation, it's adaptability. And when we look at the diversification, diverse businesses, the likes of Branson will have. It's a scenario he really stands for entrepreneurship, which is the future of the world as well in terms of alleviating poverty, in terms of addressing unemployment. But it's through innovation. It's through agility and adapting. So I would go personally with somebody like um, Richard Brands. All right. One more question, Dr. Ronaldo. Uh, Rafiq is asking, what if I have one person in my team that has a tough personality and always resisting all the decisions and ideas? So how to deal Make with Make him this? a leader. <laughs> Make him a leader. Put him in a leadership position. Let him take accountability or responsibility for the other team members around. It's the development side. We find resistance to change. We find people are always just against whatever puts in front of them. I would make him a leader. I would give him responsibility and let him develop that leadership skills. And then, of course, apply a coaching leadership style in that regard. Not critical. We don't want to criticize. We don't want to belittle the person. We want to coach him. And that may become your star leader. So I would make him a leader and do coaching leadership style. I think it can be. We got Dr. Tabaka said experiential in that regard. I would try that approach. Uh, and the last question, thank you, Dr. Ronaldo. Last question uh, is from Rim. She's asking, I believe she, it's a she. How leaders can lead and guide very challenging behaviors from different genders? And if the leader should be a woman? I think what we have in a challenge around the world, and it's coming more and more to the fore in terms of the world is becoming smaller. It's globalization has been taken to the next level. And one of the aspects in globalization we have to understand, the question comes, it almost touches on to what we spoke earlier about the different cultures around the world. There is diversification. We are a very diverse population world altogether, and we are working. I think if we sit here and we count the countries, that is just in this session today, it will we will be amazed. So from that point of view, it's very important to understand also, back to the saying I had earlier, my world is not your world. Therefore, we need to be sensitive around diversification. And then we saw that one of the leaders' uh, characteristics is inclusion. It's include everybody in terms of collaboration part of the team. It's not any form of discrimination. We need to move away from the discrimination aspect that comes in from a gender point of view. Should it be a lady? I think we had those fantastic leaders we referred to in slide two or three earlier on, and we had three or four ladies that are run on top of the world equals with the men out there, the leaders we saw there. So no, there's no differentiating in that regard. It's inclusivity, it's including everybody, and everybody forms this collaborative team, and together we address business aspects. Business aspects are getting competitive at non advantage, but the trend also is we have social responsibility as businesses. Therefore, we've got to drive this poverty levels, unemployment levels, diversity questions, so that we make sure it's not the business that's only inclusive, but society that we operate and the society that we're part of must also be inclusive. And we all have the rightful time under the sun and we work together to make everything better for all of us, business-wise, social-wise, environmental-wise. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ronaldo. I, I believe uh, you answered all the questions and that was great. And thank you for your time for the great session. And I would like to thank all the participants also for your time, your interesting questions, the enthusiasm and the participation in our session. And I, like uh, Dr. Ronaldo correctly said, we went a little over the time with the questions.
So I believe we've come to the end. Dr. Renardo, is there anything else you would like to add before we wind up? From our side, just two things. One, thank you very much for the participation. Um, the interaction was fantastic. We enjoyed it. It was really good. Point number two is we do not have to end the conversation yet. We do not have to stop it where this is. Westford Business is there um, in order to work with you on these aspects. We are there to drive these critical analysis and skills. It's collaboration, business and academic institution to work with you and your organizations in developing this, in driving this for a competitive advantage for your business. So by all means, be in touch with us, Westford for Business, um, and let's have, take this conversation further. It does not have to stop here. It shouldn't be when all things are said and done, more things were said than done. No, it's about what are we going to do going forward? Let's drive this together and we can make a success, all of us together. So in signing off from our side, thank you very much for the opportunity, Diana, and to everybody. So I thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ronaldo. And once again, thank you, everybody. And uh, before we uh, wind up fully, I would like to say we, your suggestions, your comments also matter to us. So please do let us know your thoughts, your suggestions for improvement so that we can give another great session for you and better services in the future. So after the session, you will receive a feedback form to which, which will take only about three to five minutes. So give us your, let us know your thoughts. And if you have opt for the certificate, you will receive your e-certificate, which you can publish on LinkedIn as well uh, via an email. So until we meet again with another insightful WFB Ignite session, we are over and out. Thank you very much.